What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to do a short video, show y'all how to cut the skull cap off of a deer. Uh, whether you're gonna do it for a, a horn mount, like for a plaque, or for a shoulder mount. Right here I've actually got a change out head that is gonna be used for to do a, a pack mount. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about in here. If y'all never seen a, a pack mount or aren't very familiar, uh, that's one right there that I do for some customers that I do a pretty good many of them. People seem to like them a pretty good bit, take up a little bit less room on the wall. Anyway, a lot of people don't know how to cut the horns off of a deer, uh, either once the deer has been caked or if they find a dead head and are just removing the, the skull cap. Uh, typically, when you cut off the top of that head, what a lot of people will do is they will cut this right here down at a, at, a, in a, at a wedge, almost down into, into here and then back up again. As you can see on this, it's, it's flat back to the back of the head. When you, go to, when you go to do that, if you'll take that deer's head and stand it up on its nose, use this to be a little bit easier to show y'all, just like that right there, you're gonna want the deer's, the deer's head standing straight up on its nose and cut straight down almost to the back of the eye socket. Then once you do that, you just cut it off right in front of the horn. On this one right here, I can show you on this one, see where that wedge has been cut? And that that's not bad. I mean, that's trimmable. Uh, it's just fairly typical of what most people would do, the way that most of them were cut, rather than actually cutting you know, that, that straight line right here. But the best way to trim that, once you, if, if this is what you've received or you know how you've gotten the rack, where this right here is, do we see the, where the skull comes in, right back here before you get to the brain cavity. If you'll go right there in front of that mark, I give it maybe an eighth of an inch in front of both of those, and make your cut right there, and go straight back to the back. You can see right here where the top of that skull is, it comes down and where it's got these little places that come in. If you'll just come up to that, the top of that peak right there. It's kind of hard to show you all this. On the back right there, you can see where it starts to go down, right where the, the back of the skull meets the vertebrae. If you'll just make a straight line from the front here, straight back to the top of that is what you're going to want. I've got one right here that has already been trimmed. You can see what I'm talking about where it comes from the front of that skull cavity right there, right where those lines are at where it dents, right where it dents in, goes straight back to that spot where it drops off. What that does is it allow it to sit flat. You can see how this rack will just stand on the table, just by itself. That way, when you go to put it up on your form, when you set those, those antlers down, you want it to be oriented so that it sits flat on the deer's head and you can screw it down with, with have good contact. It'll just be a, a, you know, a more firm mount, but also, It'll make sure that, that those antlers are set forward or back correctly. Like if you take this, this rack right here, you can lay it flat down on this head and it just fits right on there, right on there flush. If you'll notice, there's a little bit of a gap between the top of the foam and the top of the bone. Right there on the top of that, that skull cap. I like to actually sit this down in here where there's a little bit of a, a gap right here that you can fill in with modeling clay. It, it does not only give you a little bit of a smoother look when the deer is mounted, but it also will give you a little bit more hide when it, you come up around the base of those antlers. You're not worrying about having to pull against the eyes and pull against the face trying to get that, that cape stretched back against those antlers. Uh, typically, it, it's almost inevitable that those antlers are gonna sit too high unless you trim them where they, where they sit below the top of that skull cap on your form. So anyway, I just thought that might be helpful to y'all. Uh, it's one of those things that I didn't know coming into this and never really saw anybody explain it on a video. So I thought as part of this, like this little easy taxidermy series that I've been doing, just kind of showing 
you know, general stuff that a lot of people, I guess, I mean, you don't know unless you know, you know, and if you've never shown it. But anyway, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and trim this. Let me go ahead and trim these antlers and I'll kind of show y'all what I'm talking about here. One great thing to have is a bone saw like this. Uh, this one right here is a 17 and a half inch. It's a cam lock. See if you can, see if y'all can see that right there. It's a cam lock professional bone saw. And this thing right here makes quick work on cutting horns. Uh, you know, it's not as quick as a sawzall, which is how I usually take everything apart when I'm cleaning the deer. That's how I even cut the horns off of a skull whenever I'm getting ready to, you know, cut it up to, to shoulder mount it. But this is my trimming saw. Once the horns are dried, once they're ready, I, I can use this saw right here to cut it to the exact size. It's really, actually really precise and it's really easy to cut with. A lot easier than using a, you know, some kind of cheap uh, bow saw or a hack saw or, or really any, any other kind of saw, honestly. So far, this is the best one that I've found anyway, and they're not too expensive. Anyway, let me show y'all what I'm going to do here. I said I'm going to start. I'm going to start right here with my saw. I'm going to cut from right there on those below that where that comes in right there, and just cut straight back right into this area right here. The easiest way to do that is just lay the horn straight down on the table, hold them against your body. Get right under there. Should just stand right there. A little bit lopsided. Why well, that's because of the shape of the antlers, but you see where that flat spot is. Now it'll sit right on top of that head when you go to mount that deer, and you're gonna have it oriented just the same way that it came off the head when the deer was still alive. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching and give me a subscribe and a thumbs up if you like this video. And stay tuned because I'm going to be doing some more stuff similar to this. Thank y'all.